In this video, we want to talk about how to do OSPF route filtering. Maybe we want to filter routes from being learned by a router for security reasons. We don't want a router to have reachability to a particular network. Maybe we're trying to limit the number of entries in our IP routing table. Maybe we're trying to prevent a routing loop. And the question is, how do we filter these routes? There are three primary ways we can go about this. And to illustrate these concepts, imagine that we have a network with a couple of areas. We've got Area 0, and connected to Area 0 we have Area 1. And one of the routers in Area 1, it's connected to another autonomous system, an EIGRP speaking autonomous system. And a couple of these routers in this topology have special names. The ABR has at least one interface in the backbone area, Area 0. It has at least one interface in a non-backbone area. It's Area 1 in this case. We've got an autonomous system boundary router, which has at least one interface in an OSPF area, area one in this case, and at least one interface in another autonomous system. In this case, it's an EIGRP speaking autonomous system. And when we're doing OSPF route filtering, typically we'll filter the routes either at the ABR or the ASBR. What kinds of routes are being generated by the ABR? Well, let's imagine we have a network in area one, and that network is being advertised into area zero. How does that network show up in Area 0? Well, it's advertised by a Type 3 LSA that's generated by the ABR. If we had a network in the EIGRP autonomous system and it's being advertised into OSPF, that would be advertised via a Type 5 LSA that's generated by the ASBR. And as a result, the ABR might be a very appropriate place to filter a Type 3 LSA. We can do that with a filter list. The ASBR, that could be an appropriate place to filter a Type 5 LSA. And that's going to be done as part of a redistribution configuration. We've got another module coming up on redistribution, so we're not going to consider how to do that in this video. But there is one other approach. Let's imagine that we want to filter a route from just one of those routers inside of Area 0. Can we do that? Can we tell OSPF to have a different link state database for just one router in an area? No, we cannot. That violates one of the basic concepts of OSPF that says, all of the routers inside of an area need to agree on what that area looks like. What is the topology of that area? What networks are in that area? We're not able to filter selective routes out of an OSPF database for just one router in an area. However, what if we did this? What if we let OSPF go ahead and learn the route on that router on which we wanted to filter out a specific route? But just because OSPF knows the route, that's no guarantee that that route is going to be injected into the router's IP routing table. The route learned by OSPF is just a candidate to be injected into the IP routing table. What if we did this? What if before OSPF could inject that route into the IP routing table, we blocked it? We could configure something called a distribute list to block that route from being injected into the IP routing table while not altering the link state database for that router. OSPF knows about the route, but the IP routing table doesn't learn it because we've blocked it. Those are the three primary approaches to doing OSPF route filtering, and we want to demonstrate two of those in this video. Setting up a filter list on an ABR to block a Type 3 LSA, and configuring a distribute list on a specific router to block a route from being learned just for that router's IP routing table. Let's go out to the live interface right now and see how to set up a filter list on an ABR. On router R1, let's take a look at the IP routing table. And we can see from the IA code on some of these routes that these routes have been learned from another area. This is an OSPF inter-area code. We can see, for example, the loopback IP address of router R2 and router R3. And there are a couple of others on screen, but it's these two networks. They're actually just IP addresses because they have a 32-bit subnet mask. But it's these two prefixes that we want to filter, in this part of the example, from going into Area 0. What kind of LSA is advertising these networks into Area 0? Well, they're coming from Area 1. That means an area border router is advertising them using Type 3 LSAs. We can confirm that with the Show IP OSPF database command. And for our summary LSAs, in other words, the Type 3 LSAs, here we see 2.2.2.2 and 3.3.3.3. Let's filter those out from going into Area 0's OSPF database. To do that, we'll go to router R2 because that's the area border router. That's where we would filter Type 3 LSAs. And we're going to create a prefix list using the command IP prefix hyphen list. And we give it a name. I'm going to call this no hyphen loopbacks. And this is processed top down, much like an access control list. And I'm going to give this a sequence number. This is going to be sequence number 10. And then I'll have a number 20 and a number 30. But this is going to be sequence number 10. And I want this to deny 
the prefix for router R2's loopback IP address. I'll say deny 2.2.2.2 slash 32. It was the 32-bit subnet mask assigned to that IP address. Let's do another one for the loopback IP address on router R3. I'll increase the sequence number to a 20, and the IP address for router R3's loopback interface was 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3. I want everything else to get through though. We had a couple of other networks. I don't want them to be filtered. How do I permit everything else? Well, I do one more IP prefix list command and it's gonna be no loopbacks. Sequence number 30 this time. This time I'm gonna say permit. And I'm going to permit everything else. Here's the way we say everything else. 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, and I want to encompass all prefix lengths that are less than or equal to 32 bits, which would encompass all prefix lengths. I'll say LE, meaning less than or equal to 32. Now that I've got the prefix list configured, I need to apply it to an area. And you can apply a prefix list inbound or outbound. You can say I want to filter advertisements as they're going into an area or as they're being advertised out of an area. In this example, let's filter advertisements going into Area 0. To do that, I'll go into Router OSPF Configuration Mode, and I'll say for Area 0, let's apply a filter list. We'll say filter hyphen list, and we're going to apply a prefix list that we configured. So we'll say prefix. The name of that prefix list was no hyphen loopbacks, and we can apply this in the inbound or the outbound direction. We're going to apply this coming into Area 0, and we're done. Let's now go over to router R1 and see if it now knows about 2.2.2.2 and 3.3.3.3. It did just a moment ago. Let's go check it out. If I now give a show IP route, do I know about those loopback IP addresses? No, they are missing. What about the link state database? Does it know about them? Let's do a show IP OSPF database command. No, if we look at our type 3 LSAs, we're missing a couple that we had before, 2.2.2.2 and 3.3.3.3 they've now been filtered. That's how we can filter type 3 LSAs from coming into an area. And as we mentioned earlier, you can filter type 5 LSAs coming into an OSPF autonomous system using redistribution. We're not going to demonstrate that here. We've got another module on redistribution. But the other thing I do want to show you is how we can allow a network to be learned by OSPF on a router, but prevent that network or that prefix from being injected into that router's IP routing table. We're not able to surgically remove just a network prefix from a link state database on just one router in an area because all the routers in the area need to match. But we can prevent that prefix from being injected into the IP routing table on one router. Let's say, for example, that we want to filter the 10.2.2.0/24 network. That's the network connected to router R3's Fast Ethernet 0/0 interface. Let's filter that from showing up on router R1. Right now, we know about that network. Here it is: 10.2.2.0/24. We see it in our link state database. Let's filter it though, and we'll do that here on router R1. And like we did before, we're going to create a prefix list. Let's go into global configuration mode, and let's create a prefix list: IP prefix hyphen list, and I'll name this filter underscore 10.2.2.0. That's just the name that I came up with. I'll give this a sequence number of 10, and I want to deny a specific prefix. I want to deny 10.2.2.0 slash 24. I want to allow everything else. I'll create a sequence number of 20, and I will permit everything else. Remember how we did that previously? We said 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 less than or equal to 32. And we've now created our IP prefix list. We're going to apply this now to our OSPF process as a distribute list. Let's go into router OSPF 1 configuration mode and we'll say distribute hyphen list. And this is going to be a prefix list that we're applying. I'll say prefix. And the name of this list is filter underscore 10.2.2.0. And I want to apply this in the inbound direction. We'll say in. And let's see if this took effect. First of all, let's see if OSPF knows about the 10.2.2.0/24 network. If I do a show IP OSPF database command, I know about it. It's being advertised to me by a type 3 LSA. If I do a show IP OSPF rib command, this is the routing information base for OSPF, and it includes that route. However, the question is, has it been injected into this router's IP routing table? Let's do a show IP route and find out. If you take a look at the IP routing table, it's not there. 
10.2.2.0/24. It was there a few moments ago, but we filtered it out using a distribute list. 